Most of our society's designs have evolved into being digitally born and image manipulation has become second nature to so many of us who work in the fields of art, architecture, and photography, and industrial design. But I'll remind you that Charles and Ray Eames lived and worked in an era that did not benefit from these types of technologies, especially with programs like Photoshop. But while working in the Eames office's photographic archive, I began to witness a particular process that Charles and Ray uh, would take part in that I think would be best described in one word, which was collage. A few dozen photographs from this archive are unlike others in the collection simply because they had been altered or collaged in some way. Today I want to show you some examples of these collaged photos. Just after a furniture photo shoot in 1947, Charles and Ray were photographed playfully collapsing to the ground on the sidewalk outside of their Venice studio. Later in the year, their figures were carefully cut from this photograph and blended into another picture. The images you're seeing now are only a couple of inches tall and they require delicate handling. These exact figures appeared pasted onto a Christmas card in 1947, floating magically above the scene, you'll see Charles and Ray's little bodies. In another example, chair designs were sliced away from several prints, perhaps to envision what the scene would look like without them, or maybe to paste the designs onto another photograph here, whiteout covers unsightly aspects of an image featuring the sofa compact during a photo shoot, staged in a barren lot adjacent to the Eames office. This scene was then transformed into this advertisement for Herman Miller in 1955. And lastly, this is a black and white photograph of the Eames house facade, a place that you might recognize. In a moment, I'll focus more on this 4x5 print, but as you'll notice, it has a beige and gold papers glued to its surface. In 1983, Ray was reminiscing with historian Pat Kirkham about the Eames office's design legacy, and Ray began to describe this exact pro process of collaging and photo manipulation. And during the, the construction of the Eames house in 1949 in Los Angeles, Charles and Ray altered pictures of the house's facade and other parts of the structure so that they could better visualize potential outcomes. Ray said, We used to use photographs. We would cut out pieces from photos and put them onto other photos of the house to see how different things would look. For instance, there was a space in the studio which we wanted filled. It was between the depth of the floor where it opened for the stairs. We wondered what to do. We had saved some pier pylons from the Venice Pier. We wanted to keep something of it to remember it by. Well, we had pictures of it, glued it to a photo, and decided it worked. So we went ahead and we did it. This form of photo collaging was more than an art practice for the Eameses. And by piling, gluing, taping, and drawing over the surface of these images with imaginary components, Charles and Ray were using images to convey an idea and to test how a physical change would look without having to employ time and energy and other resources to a project. What is so easy for us now with these programs and these digital tools was much different from the Eames office at the time. And in these instances, the Eameses were using a photograph as a tool and as a model for decision making. Going back to that, that image of the Eames house facade, and while examining the collage photo, I recognized the embellished gold panels above the front door of the house and the bare neutral semesto panels to the left, and I realized the Eames house today still sports those, those elements. And to me, it looks like Charles and Ray approved of those elements and that this photo passed Charles and Ray's collage test. Stories like this are told on a monthly basis 
on the Eames Office website in a blog series called Eames Archives, An Image as an Idea. We hope you're able to read more narratives like this and to see more historic photos from our archives. All you'll have to do is visit our website at eames.link slash eamesarchives. Thank you.